to help us understand all of this and the legalities of it, I want to bring in trial attorney and legal analyst Brian Claypool. Brian, thanks for being here. I guess my biggest question right now is, does this change anything legally, the whistleblower coming forward? Hey, Marty, great to be back with you. Are you kidding me? Absolutely. I mean, Merrick Garland should be worried uh, more about an impeachment uh, in terms of whether he has potentially committed obstruction of justice. And what I mean by that is he has arguably concealed evidence and destroyed evidence in this case, Marnie. And, and I'm, I'm in particular pointing to the laptop computer of, uh, of Hunter Biden, right? I don't know if you know this, but federal a federal uh, expert in computers concluded that the Hunter Biden laptop uh, had been maintained properly and was actual evidence. And then Garland said, "No, we're not going to we're not going to touch that. That that's evidence." Merrick Garland did not allow a search warrant to go forward of of Hunter Biden's home. And then also on top of that, you now have this allegation of perjury by Merrick Garland. And perjury and destruction and concealment of evidence are two major elements of obstruction of justice. But who's going to prosecute Merrick Garland? He's the head guy. Maybe we need some kind of special outside independent committee to investigate him. And then also, what about Hunter Biden? He he, he should be arguably charged with extortion. Did, there, was a, there was a WhatsApp text message in 2017 in which Hunter Biden unequivocally is threatening a Chinese official from this company, CEFC. And he's saying, my dad is right next to me, my dad being President Biden. Unless you do what I need you to do, you will regret this. And my dad's sitting next to me waiting for a phone call. And then five days later, he gets $5 million sent to him. I mean, that is flat and squarely a definition of an extortion. Why isn't he being investigated for that? Right, and who investigates the investigators? I want to talk to you about the the new audio recording um, of former President Trump talking about the documents uh, that he is alleged to have at Mar-a-Lago. How much of an impact does that have on his case legally? What's the strategy from his legal team, given these audio recordings are now floating around? Which audio recordings are you referring to, Marnie? The auto rec audio recordings of him talking about plans to attack Iran, go to war with Iran, that were released by CNN this morning. Yeah, I, I don't. I, I, I think those those audio recordings are are, are taken out of context, and I, I mean, I think prosecutors will try to use those in the case. But of course, Trump's defense is going to be, you know, I, I didn't mean to, uh, you know, compromise national security. I just think the whole context. Of those auto recordings, I, I don't think is going to be really persuasive in a legal case. You can't take tidbits of a conversation and then try to use that to prove, uh, you know, a, a crime involving classified documents. I think that's a stretch. Even if it is his own voice talking about, I shouldn't be sharing this information. Yeah, no, I, I mean it's his voice. He's saying I shouldn't be sharing this information, but I, I, I don't, I don't really see how that proves that he has. He has broken the law in terms of the charges are involving 31 classified documents. I don't think I, I, I don't think he is he referring in that audio to an actual document or is he just having a conversation? I mean, I think I mean, if I'm repping Trump, that's what I'm going to argue. This doesn't have anything specifically to do with any of the 31 documents and that they're just trying to use the audio recording to uh, make him look like he has committed kind of like character evidence. Yeah, I guess you'd have to ask him what he was referring to, but he he was referring to information he says he wasn't supposed to share, information he now says he declassified. Yeah, it doesn't look, I mean, Marnie, to your point, it doesn't look good, right? The optics are bad, and if that gets into evidence at trial, they'll be in motion to suppress that audio tape, right? Saying it's prejudicial, it's not on point, not relevant. But I got to tell you, if the jury hears that, it, it could be damaging to his case. All right. Uh, trial attorney, legal analyst Brian Claypool, thank you. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.